Good evening and welcome to Bleak Previews. I'm Marjorie Sagas from the Wind Dixie Weekly Circular. And my name is Connie Grafton and I'm from the Wisconsin Cheese Board Monthly. Tonight we're going to be reviewing these big Aggie Awards that have been going on. All Such this. excitement. Mm. Such excitement. There was a lot of hoopla over these and oh, it was yeah. well worth it too. Oh, sure. I mean, there were five categories yeah. that we viewed this evening. A handful. Uh, we had, <laughs> oh, yeah. We had drama, music, comedy, documentary, and my favorite, foreign. Yeah. I just thought this was probably one of the finest things the I've seen foreign. today. Did you? I enjoyed it so. I did. You know, and I didn't know that Key West was foreign. I didn't know that they well, I knew, I knew that, that was foreign because I've been down there and I didn't understand a word they said. On oh, sure. Shirts. I oh. tried to order ice cream. I had to uh -huh. order seven different flavors. I couldn't get it. Who knew? Kiwi. Who, who the hell? You know, that's not a flavor. Chocolate's a flavor. Zucchini chip. Yeah. I didn't want it. I didn't know. Yeah. I but anyway, it was very, very interesting. Oh, yeah. I learned a lot of catchphrases in different languages like Celt shows. I never knew I that. I know, before. I never knew that either. Mm. I didn't oh, know so. that. And and learning fromage was so exciting for me. Yeah, it since was. I'm in cheese. Yeah, yeah, you are a cheese yeah. lover. I am. Oh, the, the drama was very oh. good too. I hadn't seen that much oh. drama on daytime oh. TV. I laughed, I cried, it oh. became a part of me. It really did. But before I introduce my co-host, let's you and I engage in a little casual and unrehearsed banter here. <laughs> Ralph, you're probably the most respected former television newsman in South Florida. <laughs> Tell me, what have you been doing since you went off the air? Dave, it's funny you would ask that question. Um, I haven't been doing very much. It's not that I'm, I'm desperate or bored or anything, but I guess... That's the reason I would appear tonight as such an incredibly vulgar show such Thank as Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Ralph Rennick. Let's hear a, a big hand for Ralph Rennick. Oh, really? Dave, you, take me seriously. I need a job. Ladies and gentlemen, Ralph Rennick. I need Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. There goes a classy man. <clears throat> but on with the show. On behalf of the Miami Herald and WLRN Television, I'd like to welcome you all, both here in the studio audience and at home, to the first annual Augie Awards to recognize excellence in home video achievement in South Florida. Unfortunately, as you're going to see tonight, it turns out that there is no excellence in home video achievement in South Florida. But that's not going to prevent us from going ahead with our show tonight. And here to help me show it to you are my co-hosts, the stars of Something on 17. Will you welcome, please, Miss Meredith Port and Mr. Don Webb. Well, Meredith and Dave, according to these cue cards uh, we are reading tonight, this is a very exciting night. Uh, not just for, not just for us here in the school board auditorium, but also in the area immediately outside the school board auditorium. Well, Dave and Don, that's true. In fact, why don't we go outside for a live report from correspondent Philip Brooker, who is engaged in all types of excitement out there. It's so exciting here. There are literally thousands and thousands of people, celebrities everywhere. Fans have been here since 3 o'clock this morning. They're everywhere. Thousands and thousands of fans. It's really exciting. It really is here at the 
Hoggies. This is such a very special night. Did you notice? It's not even dark outside. That's amazing. <laughs> Say, what are those sounds that I'm about to hear? <laughs> John, those are the incessant nagging sounds of Bill Rose and his all Tom Moon Orchestra who will be providing the background music for tonight's gala event. Let's give them a big hand. Perhaps, just perhaps, it might be a good idea if we took just a moment here to explain to our audience tonight what the earth is going on. Dave, a lot of people would like to know, what are the Augies anyway? Well, Meredith and Don, a while back we decided that it was time somebody recognized home video achievement in the South Florida area. So we asked the readers of Tropic Magazine to send in their home videos in five major award categories. Tonight, the winners in those five major categories will receive awards of $200 each to compensate them for the fact that they have lost their reputations forever and ever. <laughs> also, of course, they will receive the coveted Augie statuette. Gosh, Dave and Meredith, that's great. But like many viewers, I have a question. Who really is Augie? Good question, Don. Perhaps it would help if we watched the following factual documentary feature. Augie was never like other dogs. When I bought her, I expected her, you know, to be a dog. But um, she always seemed to be different somehow. It was like she didn't have the mind of a dog. She seemed to have the mind of a... Uh, Zucchini. This is the swing set from our backyard. Augie used to spend hours here, out with my daughter Molly. Molly would sit in the swing, swing back and forth. Augie would be sitting right here, kind of worshipful the way dogs do. And every time Molly swung forward, her feet would bat Augie right in the face. And Augie would take it time and time again. The dog simply did not know how to stop the punishment. She didn't have a clue. Hi, we're here with Carol Miller, a former neighbor of Augie's. And Carol, probably you have some memories of Augie. Yes, I remember one time Gene walking his dog one day, he, and the dog walked right under my porch and urinated. Right he there on your porch? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Augie has left her mark almost everywhere in this neighborhood. We're here with Sid Bernstein, a longtime resident of Augie's neighborhood and a close personal friend of Augie herself. Sid, what are some of your memories of Augie? Augie was a dignified lady in many ways, but she was a real slob well, when it came to drinking. Uh, this is her bowl. You actually have Augie's bowl. Yes, I do. One day I was, became very nostalgic for the wine gardens, walked around the house, and here I saw Augie's bowl on the ash heap, and I said, this will never, never do. So I took it and retrieved it, and here it is in daily use in my garden. Do you have any idea how much this bowl is probably worth today on the open market? Well, I wouldn't sell it for 15 cents. We're doing a documentary about Augie, which is the dog that used to live here. I'm sure that you, like so many people, have a lot of memories of Augie. Is that right? Uh, about a dog? Yeah, the Augie, the dog that used to live here. It's a really well-known, famous dog. A whole award has been named after him. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know too much. You have to ask them guys. They might know more about it than I do. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, they might know more about it than I do. Uh, uh, uh -huh. That's okay. Yeah, As we can see, Augie has had quite an effect what, what on... What happened There used to be a dog that lived here. What happened to it? Well... Tragically, it was a she. Tragically, she had to be put away um, really in the prime of her life before she really achieved uh, her, her full potential as a dog. Uh -huh. And uh, that's why we're doing this documentary here today. Uh -huh. And I'm sure that, like so many people, you probably are pretty deeply moved by this whole story. Well, yeah, I've been over here 18 years on this route. And you don't remember any uh, dog here? No, I don't. Huh. I don't well, 
uh, as we can see, Augie has had quite an impact on the community. <laughs> A lot of people would like to know how the balloting procedure worked. Well, Meredith, in accordance with the strict bylaws of the Augie Academy, the winners this year were chosen by a group of people sitting around a dining room table, eating takeout pizza, and arguing until they all really hated each other. <laughs> and then, in accordance with the bylaws, the secret results were placed in the custody of a prestigious firm, a CPA firm and also a cement manufacturing company, Vincent A. Fugliosi. And tonight we have two representatives from that corporation, and they will... They will give us the uh, envelopes that contain the names of the winners of the coveted Augie winners. Gentlemen, you may now give us the envelopes. I thought this was a construction job. This is what? I'm sorry, I thought it was a construction job. It's good talking with you. Uh, well! I just want to point out that was really hilarious when, yeah, well, when we, we wrote it. Uh, um, but it, it never really has worked. Yeah. I have another line. A lot of things are very funny on paper. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's okay. The winners were in yesterday's Tropic Magazine. Also on hand for the festivities tonight is our referee, Mr. T.C. Clark. Let's have a big hand for T.C. Clark. <laughs> young man will never have to work again. He can just stand on the street and ask people for money. But <laughs> in accordance with Academy bylaws, TC will be timing the acceptance speeches tonight. And should any speech exceed the mandatory 30-second limit, TC will notify the contestants that the time is up by, by blowing the, the gala air horn. <laughs> what a festive time this will be. This Thank you, TC. Let's... This he sees having fun already, yes, too. He's, he's a fun guy. As you can see, this is a very festive night. But before we get to the winners, we'd like to give you an idea of how much work went into producing these videos. We're going to give you a behind-the-scenes look at some of the people who did enter the contest. You know, the Augies, this is a prestigious award, okay? And they are going to be expecting a goof. Well, here's where we double-cross them. We give them a serious documentary on uh, some uh, probing uh, facet of South Florida life. Uh, the monastery on Stark Island. Uh, There's a monastery on Blind Carmelite nuns. Uh, five minute time limit and they're blind. They don't do much of anything. We can squeeze that in. And they don't even know about that. Okay, what is it? Blind? They don't even know we're filming. By the way, that unrehearsed video was submitted by Michael Walton, Bruce Peterson, and Susan Hawkins. Now it's time for our first Augie Award, Best Female Vocalist. Originally, this category didn't exist, but when we saw the video feature you're about to see, we were so excited by the incredible new talent it represented, we knew that you would have to see this. Ladies and gentlemen, will you welcome, uh, the, or will you watch with us, please, the vid winning video in the new category, Best Female Vocalist, Jason Christensen. I was going to say that Jason is not with us tonight because earlier today he was punched in the mouth by Sean Penn. Mother is here to accept the award. Thank you, Virginia. That's our first dog. Okay. We're here at the Bayside Marketplace in downtown Miami to try to get some idea of the impact that this dog, Augie,
has had on this community. Let's talk to some normal, ordinary people just like yourselves. We are here with a French person here in um, the Bayside Marketplace. No, a new sum ZC avec une personne française, n'est-ce pas? Oui. Uh, Savez-vous, uh, uh, Augie? Pardon? Un, un Pierre? Dog? Comment, comment dit-on dog? Chien. Chien, oui, ah. un chien. <laughs> uh, he had a major impact on your life, I'm assuming. Is he as popular in France as, say, Jerry Lewis? No? No. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, Merci. Merci beaucoup. beaucoup. <laughs> hey, right. Très bien. Tell me when. Okay. We're here with a Spanish-speaking journalist. Uh, uh, usted es... Uh, ¿Sabe usted Augie? Eh, yo soy sudamericano, sí. uruguayo. Sí. Mi nombre es Vicente. Mi primera visita a Miami, a Estados Unidos. Estoy encantado. Okay, what he is saying is that Augie is probably the most important influence he's ever had in his life, and he speaks for all of the continent of South America when he says this. Is that not basically what you said, sir? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Thank you very, very much. Okay, Muchas okay. gracias. I Well, Dave, I didn't know that you spoke so many different languages. And now for the first major award of the night, the Augie for the Best Foreign Film. This year's winner was produced by Eric Wolverton and Omar Masri. It's a kung fu movie that explores many of the classic kung fu themes. People hitting people, people falling down, and above all, really bad dubbing. We regret that we can't show you the entire film tonight because, quite frankly, we're afraid if we did, our entire viewing audience would pass out face down in its bean dip. <laughs> so what we've done is put together an edited version showing you some of the fast-paced paced action scenes. Will you please watch the Kung Fu winner of the best foreign film? Stop. Yeah. Many years ago, when Earth was still ruled by Mongols, and China was still a small village, upon these years there lay an invasion of Vikings from an isle called Japs. The Chinese farmers, fish, farmers could no longer stand the oppression set upon them by the Japs. So two brothers, Wang and Wong Chong, set out to destroy the Jap Yo. Yeah. Brother, what should we do? I don't know. Japanese have a strong hold on us. Ah, too bad. I see there is a help. We must catch fish. Yes, I'm getting very hungry. How about we go home, brother? We have got nothing. Uh, yes, we must catch fish, fish for dinner. Yes, no fish. You are right. You Charlie's go! I'm getting hungry, man! What'd you say? You heard us? You shall you die! Shall die. Fire. 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 Accepting the Augie for Best Foreign Film is Eric Wolverton. I would like to thank my mother and my father for giving me the talent that I... Live television, great. All right, <laughs> I'd like to thank Omar and Ruben and Fred, Alberto and Jose, 
who helped a lot with the film and did just as much as I did. They just couldn't come tonight. Look at her. And, and my English teacher. So, so Thank you, I got to get out Before we go to our next Augie, we're going to we're going to pause for a commercial message. Having problems sometimes over smoling peoples when they talk, when they feather, what Elmer? Well, you're not for one. Listen to Betty Prisser, House Lice. I'm Betty Prisser, a no house lice like myself. Used to when people near the Fred Wario, I had kid lot of Tabasco scales on the state in them, much less crying out well high brandy stacks plant. But then I'll try a bottle of rap scales, and if I could still have it, I don't. At least I don't realize it no more. There, poop frosted it that grab scalmers with its flameless formula of 22 separate snakes and gershes, banded with meese, and fortified especially with DNA-7, the mystery chemical, beads directly on your consciousness, binding your kinds and building geese where none would therefore bear. Tie this single test. <laughs> so if you wonder what Uncle Pending when listening becomes futile, try grab scalmers Prist. It's the gene span and the metal bottle and the best for your mental mess. By the way, that commercial message was submitted by David Drummond, Robert Justice, Phil and Barbara Tortorici, and Sam and Irene Quincy. You know, Don and Meredith, we sure are having a lot of fun tonight. Too much. Is this what you call fun, huh, Dave? This is your idea of a good time. We're not so sure. The Augie Awards also have a serious side, I've been told. Yes, Meredith. You must be referring to the documentary award, which each year goes to a video that exposes a problem that all of us need to become concerned about even if the problem doesn't happen to exist. That is right, Don, and this year the winner is Old Men Being Stolen by Judson Bibb. Behind this sunbelt setting, something wanton is going on. Thousands of innocent men are kidnapped and smuggled into Florida each year. So they are eagerly snatched up by hordes of rapacious women. A special report, the male slavery problem. It's a silent crime, taking place in the shadowy world of many parks, streets, and bars in northern cities. Innocent men quietly spending their days playing checkers, feeding pigeons, and sitting on benches. Fall prey to organized gangs of old women known as widow whoppers. The men are then shipped south to be auctioned off to rich widows starving for companionship. Here they are specially groomed and pampered. Federations of oysters and bran, heavily laced with vitamin E. Then locked away in condominiums and brought out only to serve the desires and fantasies of their mistresses. Those lucky enough to escape are left penniless in a strange city. A few go underground, eventually making their way back to the north and freedom to once again lead normal, healthy, inactive lives. But most resort to working the streets getting business from those who can't afford a man of their own. Hey, Grandma. How about a slow one? Oh. Usually, it's not long before they are recaptured and returned to their mistresses to once again be subjected to such cruel practices as bondage. When confronted, the women had a variety of reasons for keeping men, such as bestial. They wouldn't allow us to keep pets in our condo, so I got the next best thing. You know, and they're kind of nice to have when you train them how to clean up after themselves. Shall I clean the patio now, dear? Ornamental. I've always wanted a man of my own, but it's very important to have a good selection. For instance, tonight I'm taking out Harry because he looks so good in blue. Collectible. 
Men are like cars. As you can see, 1919 was a very good year. Notice the classic design, the long, sleek look. And the nifty hand crank for cold weather starting. Meanwhile, the slave trade goes on. I'd like to thank Tropic Magazine and Melba, I guess it is, and Sh Shirley. And uh, also, first of all, Doug Curtis, the Ziegfeld Girls of Florida, and the Yiddish Theater of Tamarack. Uh, I couldn't have done it without you there. And on a personal note, uh, honey, I'm going to be a little late tonight, so uh, if you could, we need uh, milk, <laughs> eggs, uh, bread, uh, ant traps, um, tuna pot pie, Ice cream sprinkles, the colored ones, not the chocolate, not the chocolate. Uh, Uncle Ben's extra long grain and rich rice in the boiling bags. And uh, Salisbury steak TV dinners, but make sure it's the Swanson stuff. The other apple cobblers just never can... <laughs> Mexico City, is that yes, right? I'm from Mexico City. Yes, I have. I myself have been to Mexico. I come for business and uh, to go see to their very beautiful place. You did you come here because of Augie? Are you familiar yes. with? Yes. Yes. And, yes, I know. And you wanted to be near where Augie yeah, had yeah. been. So yes. many people do come uh, from Mexico and even farther away. I so, know that very much people come here. Yes. And uh, all times is uh, very good for them. Yes. All times. All times. Because I stay uh, this, uh, in this moment yeah. here. So Augie meant a lot I, to you in your life. I know, I know in Mexico City. Yeah. That's well, Augie never beautiful. got to Mexico City. Yes, yeah. Okay, well, thank you very thank much. You, thank you. All right. <laughs> yes, but let's forget the weather. Now let's talk about Augie, because that's really why you came, isn't it? Admit it. Admit it, yes, you Is, bet. Does Augie have a fairly large following out in Iowa? Uh, quite a few, yes. You all follow the awards and so oh, on? Oh, sure, yeah. Well, we're here with two very large gentlemen, uh, and I assume that guys like yours guys like yourselves have probably been deeply affected by Augie. Oh, absolutely. It's created a major trauma in my life, I know that. The, the death of Augie? Well, you know, the whole, the whole scene. The entire life, I, I think. The whole, from the whole picture, yeah. really. It's a sad situation. It's very moving. It's why you guys are wearing dark and somber colors, I know. I, I'm even, you know, right now it's too dark in here, but I'm even wearing the sunglasses. It's a, it's a, it's a day of mourning for us. Yeah, it's, and, and would you say... Well, I agree also. The only thing I didn't get to do is wear black socks, but... It's just today. Usually I do. Me too. Yeah. You got some stuff in your teeth. You want to share the reason for that with us? Uh, that has to do with the food court upstairs. And uh, in, uh, in Augie's honor, we were, we were having a the dog meat special up there. As we can see, these people are really very seriously and deeply moved by the whole Augie thing. And I don't want to trouble them any longer. Guys, you go on ahead about whatever it is you do. Sure. It's probably not a legal thing, but good luck anyway. Okay. Yeah. Send uh, our regards to the family. Thank you. Thank you. I will. We come now to the special Audi Uggy Awards for public service. Our first winner is in the highly competitive personal hygiene category. It was submitted by Peter Belasco, Brian Ilg, and Rouge Kugu. I can honestly say that this video had a profound impact on the judges. I will agree, Dave. I personally had to leave the room after watching this, so uh, stay tuned and watch and you'll see why. It's a fact that gum disease is the leading cause of tooth decay. Water picking is a safe, fast, easy, and effective way to dislodge microscopic food particles known to promote gum disease. A pulsating stream of water gently massages gums and removes those food particles that even a thorough brushing can miss. During the course of a typical three-meal day, a veritable smorgasbord of food can be caught between teeth and gums. The American Dental Association recommends water picking as an effective method for promoting good dental hygiene. Here to accept the award are Peter Belasco, Brian Ilg, and Rouge Cuckoo. Thank you very much. Right, yeah, won't be beat. 
Anyways, anyways, uh, we feel we are very well endowed to got an Augie. I got an Augie once, there's nothing a good dose of penicillin couldn't cure. But seriously, we'd also like to thank Kim Kyle of Miami Twice for the use of her very beautiful beaver hat. That's Miami Twice, American Antiques and Vintage Clothing. Buy and sell, 6576 South 40th Street, Miami, Florida. We later lamb chops. What would we do without TC guys, huh? Moving words yeah. indeed, I think. Our next winner in the public service category are Joe Pakula, Peter Rosen, and Jimmy Stanford, who submitted a how-to documentary so profoundly irresponsible that we're not even going to say what it's about. How-to film, boys and girls. Rule number one, talk to your shirt in loosely. There you go. Never look directly at the attendants. Here we have a food selection. Great American barbecue chips. Hey. These Oscar Mayer wieners are great. Boys and girls, the classic one is always kneel down and drink them in the store. <laughs> Don't attract yourself things. to anything. Good night. Nothing for me, thanks. Okay. Have a good night. No, nothing for me, thank you. We, we just want to stress to our young viewers out there that that was just a joke and they paid for every single thing you saw used in that particular video. Um, unfortunately, the camera person in that, uh, Joel Pakula, cannot be with us tonight because he is in prison. <laughs> However, his father, Arnold, is here with a picture of his son, Joel, so you'll see that. Also on hand are Pete Rosen, and the on-camera personality, Jim Stanford. Let's give him a big hand. Um, I'd like to thank um, Panda Video Productions for the lease of their camera and um, the clerk behind the counter at Circle K for such a nice nature and letting us keep all the food that we stole. And um, my They're parents, I'd like to thank. <laughs> I want to thank my father for love, the, the use of his cameras and all his influence which made this possible. I only wish I could be there to accept this award, said my son. <laughs> no Augie for me, thanks. You look like you have an idea here. Well, lipo suction comes to mind. That's all I can think of. Well, that's big in South Florida, beach, isn't it? Beach number. I don't know. That's been awfully lipo overdone. Liposuction in the church. Liposuction in the church? Okay, now there's a hybrid topic, isn't that? You know, Don and Meredith, when I think about all the entries we got for this year's Augie Awards, what strikes me above all was their overall quality. Well, that's interesting because what's been striking me tonight is quantity, not quality. But anyway, yes, that is why we did put together this next montage of highlights from some of the videos that we cannot show in their entirety. Good evening, South Floridians. I am Mitchell Euphoria, and this is Five Minutes. <laughs> Oh, I feel better now. Okay, now, uh, how about sharing some of that fruit with me, huh? Huh? Mmm, those are good grapes. Mm -hmm. 
back in see I kind of changed you see I got more weight here and the hair is a lot longer see the hair the hair is much longer so this is not a facsimile a facsimile this is not a facsimile this is actual time span of uh, of a decade almost you know six years which is almost a decade if you're counting by twos but you know Look, long hair, now short hair. Short hair, long hair. Hi. was the night that I looked up her dress. Up until then, I had no idea what life was about. Neoplasmic barbarians running through my mind. Existential cockroaches do the bump and grind. Candy sweet little girl ripped to shreds and gore. Killing all the Nazi Smurfs, mashing Tipper Gore. I believe no, that. Bill, I dared you. You're going in. All right, but you're coming with me. No way. What happened to these kids? I mean, how did they get killed? Help! Help! No! Help! Help! No! No! You know, Dean, I I'm really glad we moved here. Me too. But we've got to do something about this music. Oh, great. What? The doorbell. Mm -hmm. Doorbell? months later, we began to seriously prepare him for the rigors of space. This here will test your ability to withstand shock and keep, see if you can keep your food down, Dylan. Let's see how you do. Oh, he lost his head. Oh, no. Oh, no. They're... Okay, here we are in 1988. You can see there's the same shorts that I had in 82 little weight there. I'm going to go into the time warp shower. Okay, and when I come out, it's going to be 1982 bathroom. Okay, look at the tile, okay? Now watch when I come out. Okay, look. Whoa. 1982. Look at the sink. It's different than it was in 88. And the toilet seat's up. Jacksonville, the sand is dark and hard. Cars are driving all over the day. So 
don't know. Now, you see, Tampa, you know, nothing's out there on the West Coast. And in Tampa, Tallahassee, it's just darn cold. And you just want to load it up, got that seasonal thing, you know, just do you down, you don't get a feel for it. That's why, that's why. That was part, that moving montage that you've just seen. Uh, the judges, we actually had an opportunity to witness, view, go through over a hundred uh, entries this year. And next year, we figure, how many, Dave? I hope we get maybe 10, 12 next year. <laughs> <laughs> now, it, re it really was quite a day. Uh, we did it at our house, and it was, I would say, five to 600% humidity that day. And we had to watch tapes forever and ever. I see we can go to the next one now. That's good. Say. Um, <laughs> we are ready for the next one right now. Because I'm going to say my line yes, is, wait, wait. the real excitement is just beginning. Yes. I love your line, Do Dave and Don. The next winner for is for Best Dramatic Feature. It was entered by Brad and Scott Sonneborn and Andy Rheingold, Tim Klein. And these talented young men chose to make a terrifying video feature, as you're going to see. Uh, again, because of time constraints, we can't show you the entire... Uh, tape here. So just so you can understand the plot, this concerns uh, the, the exploits of four very brave young teenage boys being pursued around a designer home by a very large, very terrifying beanbag chair. Get ready, South Florida, because here comes the sludge. <laughs> Thank you. This, this really means a lot to me. This movie is very important to me. It was uh, very autobiographical. Ah! Oh. Thank you. We, uh, 
uh, now come to the special Augie for special effects this year's winners. Well, you'll meet them in a moment. And the entry, Star Trek IV, Return from Uranus. That's not how you say it, Don. It is on this show. <laughs> so let's watch these amazingly, realistically, specially, effectually. <laughs> to take this kind of strain, sir. The dilithium crystals are draining our power supply. And the people responsible for this amazing technical achievement are Chris Peterson, Elizabeth De La Cruz, Elena Parada, and Joe Picciano. We want to thank Tropic Magazine for this. Yeah, for this wooden trophy. <laughs> it's just what I. It's gonna look great next to my Boy Scout. Uh, <laughs> except that those are metal, you know. Maybe they could have lost this bouncer guy and go get some real trophies. <laughs> and maybe we can, for a hundred dollars, I guess we can go all go to Lums afterwards, you know. <laughs> Tickle pink, you know. Yeah, maybe I gotta get a hacksaw. We can split it into five sections. Here. Hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Isn't it amazing the way they were able to recreate, uh, very realistically, the, the feeling of scale model spaceships hanging from strings? Um, we come now to the highly competitive category of best music video. Don, we had some really terrific entries this year. Yes, Dave, we did. But when the judges saw the winning entry, which you're about to see in a moment, we just had to sort of lurch to our feet and get funky. So let's watch and see why. Susan Hawkins. Uh, 
Uh, thanks, Miami Herald, for being so silly uh, and showing four of ours tonight. We're so happy. And in Key West, we want to thank Tony Rose. And? We also want to thank Bruce Peterson here, the director of all the music oh, videos. And Danny Weather. Uh, Fluffy Rice and Steve. And we also have Skipper Crippets, Donald Morris. Ruth Gibbons, Myra Negron. Tom Murtha and the cute Kelly Moore. Stan Nixon, and special thanks to the guilty children, Helene Langtree. And Philip Clark. Give me. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And at this point, we now come to our most prestigious award, Best Comedy Feature. This was also a very difficult category for the judges because the truth is that all of them deserve to win. And when I say that, I'm not exaggerating. To tell you the truth, I'm lying. Yes, you are, Meredith, but I think our viewers will understand <laughs> that when it came time to give the Augie for Best Comedy Feature, we had to give it to the Flying Gators of Key Biscayne. Let's watch. <laughs> South Floridians usually envision them as large, ferocious beasts and would be caught dead within 25 feet of one. Hello, I'm Chester Fleshman. Imagine living your life from day to day with prehistoric creatures from another time in your backyard. Pretty scary, eh? Not for these folks here at Key Biscayne. For two weeks a year, they live with the breeding of the South Floridian flying gator. I'm here with Carl Doth, who's devoted his life to the study and legend of these gators. Carl? Uh, Chester, this is not a legend. These animals, uh, they exist, they are factual, and uh, I'd like to invite you and your crew to uh, join me on my rounds today, and I'll show you a flying gator or two. Surely, Carl. Thank you. Well, um, first thing you got to know about these gators is uh, they look like every other gator, so it's a little hard to identify them, actually. Uh, the only difference is that they actually fly. Uh, of course, the, the Latin name for them would be uh, Crocodilius aviatus. Uh, that's just for, for some of you. About five, six 600,000 eggs are hatched every year, but did you know that less than one-fifth of one percent actually make it to the uh, Opelika Indian Reservation out in the Everglades? And that is where, of course, they go through the rest of their lives. Um, they breed approximately... Um, they uh, hatch for about two weeks, and uh, unusually so, though. Carl amazed us with his facts and figures. But what really moved us was his love for these reptiles. On the world, when they're young, they're fun and playful, cute and cuddly. You just love to hold them, and you love to, to squeeze them and teach them little tricks and stuff like that. Now, the thing is, what we do now at the uh, range station is we take them in, and we try and treat, teach them tricks. Uh, we got one of them, we call them Silver. After a short but informative car ride with Carl, we found ourselves in the midst of the breeding grounds of the South Floridian Flying Gator. Hey now, Chester. Uh, most of my work is done up in the trees where I'm tagging these alligators. Because uh, after about 10 minutes after that hatch, they figure out how to fly, and then after that, you just can't catch these boys. But, um... They, nobody really knows how they get up in the trees to lay the eggs. They're the only alligators that lay eggs in trees. And here, Lou, they are friendly. Look at this guy. Hey, they're fun. It's, I tell you, I have more fun playing with these alligators up in the trees than I do in the, in the, at the station back home. Hey, Lou, what's your, what is your name? Good gosh. I love my work, and that's why I do it. So we leave Carl alone in the woods with his little gator friends, happy as a lark. But we had to ask ourselves, how are the other inhabitants of this island paradise coping? This family sports protective headgear to ensure a peaceful day at the beach. While local vendors turn a quick buck by selling them as a delicacy to tourists. Hunters, for two weeks, it's open season. But it's not all fun and games for everyone during the flying gator season. Government officials must work long overtime hours to help manage the reptilian situation.
And as our day drew to a close, we found ourselves endeared to this mysterious phenomenon of nature, whose short two-week migration touches the lives of all those who cross their path on this island paradise, Key Biscayne. And here to accept the Augie for the best comedy feature are Peter Velasco, Brian Ilg, and Rouge Kugu. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay, you tell him. You tell him. You say you tell him. No, I'm not gonna tell him. You tell him. He's mad about the crackers, aren't you? You tell him. Anyways, it was. We're supposed to drag it out. We have ten minutes to kill. TJ, you're wrong. You don't know what you're doing. It's ten minutes to kill. <laughs> Well, well, Meredith and Don, that certainly, wrap, certainly wraps up our show for tonight. I imagine that uh, we'll never see anything quite like this ever again on television, not if the FCC finds out about what we did here tonight. There are really, there's so many people that we would like to thank who helped to make this possible, but they've asked us not to name them on the air. We, we were trying hard to figure out a good way to close this show. We, we're really doing, as you can probably figure out, a parody of the Oscars, but we've never been to the end of the Oscars. Nobody's ever seen it. We're not sure how they, they stop that. We're always pretty much asleep by that point. So we thought, why not have a big slam-bang musical finale? We've asked all of our winners, all of our celebrities, and anybody else who wants to, to get up on stage and do the latest home video sensation, The Kirk. Geographic, just all encompassing in every single animal thing you we know ever did. It was did. like if they ever made one of the National Geographic full books and you could I just lift it up and look oh at the yeah. pelican fly across the water. That it was beautiful. just like Only it was in color. I know, which I love. Yeah. I love a color. So I, what else? We had, we had comedy. That was pretty funny. I oh, chortled. Oh, I, oh, I, I laughed so hard. I got so hard my chin stuck together. <laughs> I was bunching so, up a lamb over that yeah, one. Oh, that yeah. was a good one. Well, I've been Marjorie Saggins from the Win Dixie Weekly Circular. And I've been Connie Grafton from the Wisconsin Cheese Board Monthly. Let me tell you, I give this year's Aggies chips up. Uh, cheese cubes for me. Oh, God. I want to see it over and over again. So do I.